why do I place such an emphasis on Holy Communion? So I'm going to answer the questions that were placed about Holy Communion in this video, but I want to explain to you why I place such an emphasis on it. When the Bible says that light shines and the darkness cannot extinguish out that light, that scripture is true, John 1, 5. When God opened up the eyes of my heart, to enlighten the eyes of my heart, to understand the magnitude of Holy Communion, that was it. Like, I was so shook. I think I was shaking. Just like, just the, like understanding it, I was shaking. And so, um, I love Holy Communion. I love partaking in the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And so, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. But I'll tell you what the revelation was towards the end of this video. Let me address the questions first because it's not fair that I talk about myself. I don't like... Uh, yeah, let's just do your questions first. And then if we have time, I'll talk about what God revealed to me about Holy Communion, okay? So my question is, how often should we take it? As often as you take it, do it to remember Jesus Christ. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 30, okay? Can you take it outside of a church or in your home? Yes, you can take Holy Communion outside of a church. You can take it in your home. I take it at least twice per week, at least, that is minimum, meaning on the live on Fridays we take it. And also within the week, I am led to take Holy Communion because when I do a court session during the week, sometimes Holy Spirit is like seal it with the blood of Jesus, like seal it with the Holy Communion. So the biggest seal, the biggest stamp is Holy Communion. So I take it at least twice a week in my home. What do you use at home? So at home, I use water or I use pomegranate juice. I have pomegranate juice readily available in our fridge. But if I don't have that, let's say I'm in a hotel, I'm traveling and I'm led to take Holy Communion. I'll take water and I also use um, bread crackers to for the body of Jesus. And so once you pray the prayer, it becomes a spiritual thing, right? Prayer is what changes it from water or pomegranate juice or a cracker or bread to represent, to represent symbolically in the spiritual realm, the body of Jesus. In the spiritual realm, the blood of Jesus. Okay. Next question was, what time? So like I said, I take it if I am doing a court session, a heavenly court session. So that could be early morning. It could be in the evening. It depends when I have done a court session. Also on the live, we usually go to the courts of heaven. And so we close it or we enter through the realm of the blood of Jesus by doing Holy Communion. Okay. She's new. Okay, praise God. And she said, I always thought that it could only be done in church by the pastor. No, no, you are a child of God. You have access to God through Jesus Christ, the mediator. Our mediator is Christ Jesus. He is the high priest. He is of the heavenly temple. He is our intercessor in heaven. He is our mediator in heaven. So you can do Holy Communion in your home anytime when God leads you to do it. Um, somebody said, I think the essence or the importance of pleading or invoking or taking the blood of Jesus is to say, Lord, we remember all that you have done for us each and every day till he comes. Beautiful. God always had covenants with Israel where he would say to this, do this from generation to generation or do that which God had instructed them to do perpetually. The blood of Jesus is a covenant. So even if we speak, call, invoke, or etc., every day is a great thing. There shouldn't be issues or questions about it unless at least from a believer's point of view or and understanding. That's my thoughts. I love your thoughts. Thank you for sharing. And other questions were, and oh, the benefits, benefits. Let me share the green screen one second. So I made this back in March of 2022, but it's still the same. It still stands. The benefits are remembering the Lord, remembering his love for us, remembering the love of the father who decided to give up his son so he could have more sons into his family. And the purpose, you know, the purpose of Christ, his arrival, his defeat of principalities, powers, the spiritual wickedness in high places, 
uh, the you know the words that he spoke his last words which were tete lestai it is finished so all of that is renewing the covenant and remembering that wow christ said it is finished therefore this issue this problem this mountain does not have to be here like everything was settled at the cross so you are renewing that covenant you are renewing your mind on the reality of christ's sacrifice for us and what he did on the cross for us and for you and for your family and for your child or whatever you're dealing with so another benefit is breaking habits or evil covenants so whenever you destroy things Jeremiah 110 shows a principle that when you destroy things, you have to plant and build. So when you destroy evil covenants, blood sacrifices that were done in the bloodline, you are planting and putting seeds of the blood of Jesus Christ and the covenant of Jesus in your bloodline, right? You just, you just destroyed all these evil covenants, but now you have to reinstate something else that is the opposite. And the opposite is what? The eternal covenant of Christ Jesus and the sacrifice with his blood into what you just destroyed, right? You have to plant and build after destroying and dismantling and tearing down. All right, number three is healing strength for your mortal body. Yes, so sometimes when you're not feeling well, you can take Holy Communion and be healed and be so free. I have gotten so many testimonies about that. Somebody's son was bitten by a snake and they actually gave the son Holy Communion and their poison was localized it did not spread to other areas why because if the mother as an authoritative figure has the faith that that blood of Jesus Christ will remain and circle around the poison in her son's body and will not let it go systemic it's done you speak the word you believe it it's done okay number four we focus on Christ the author and the finisher of our faith then we have strength Faith booster. A few people said, oh, when I take it, I feel so refreshed. I feel boosted. That's true. Happens to me too. And also sometimes when I'm going through, there was a time when I was going through intense spiritual warfare and Holy Spirit led me to take Holy Communion that particular week four times. Four times in one week because it was that intense. And every time I would take it, it's almost like I would get relief from the attacks that were happening around me, in me on me i don't know i don't remember what exactly was happening but i know it was intense i was emotional i was crying i was just it was a lot happening and god was like holy communion next day holy communion next day holy communion and i'll get the booster that booster of my faith like oh wow christ did so much for me okay why am i why am i feeling this way let me renew my mind on the covenant of christ renew my mind on what he did for me amen and purification with the blood and the reminder of the power in the blood so those are the benefits i hope that helped you um if you want me to post the benefits for whole community let me know and i'll post them in the community section of youtube because youtube allows me to post so much more uh words <laughs> than take no restraints there but god bless you i hope this helped you but yes whole community is such a part oh the revelation that god gave me was that when you take Holy Communion, the Bible talks about John 6, 30, John chapter 6, verse 50 through 57. Jesus Christ himself said, if you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, I'm in you, you are in me. The opposite of that is when you eat in dreams, you're eating the body of the enemy, you know, sacrifices that were done with animals or humans or whatever, and you're drinking the blood that was shed, human or animal. So you're taking the exact opposite. That is why you wake up with diarrhea, sicknesses, diseases, illnesses, and destruction. So the Holy Communion is literally the opposite of embodied in John 10.10. 10. Look at John 10.10. 10. John 10.10. 10.